Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to show you how my battery layout at home looks like for the main battery bank. First of all my ba battery bank at home is built out of 48 pieces of 12 volt valence lithium iron phosphate batteries. Each of every one of those contains roughly 130 amp hours. And if we sum up the 8650 cells in total that's roughly 19,200 cells. That's quite a lot of cells. Um, we have a nominal voltage of 51.2 volt. It's so called 48 volt system. And there is somewhere around 80 kilowatt hours of usable storage. Uh, the th nice thing about this battery bank is that it can deliver a continuous output of 1800 amps. That's roughly 92 kilowatt of brutal force power. This also makes it very very dangerous to handle and it's very very big need of fuses. Uh, so today I'm going to show you a little bit of how my battery bank is connected together in a theoretical form. So let's get going. First of all, the batteries I'm using are this type of batteries. They do contain from the beginning a BMS system built in and that's the cable you see on top. The batteries itself are hooked together with help of, as you can see here, normal cables or M8 bolts. Inside of the batteries you will see that the 18650 cells is tied together tightly and they can form four packs. Each pack is roughly 100 cells, so that's conform of 4S100P configuration. Here you can see me when I actually re have removed the BMS system and I have started to install the long mods. The long mods will be stored on the outside of each of those packs and as you can see I have four long mods on each of them. That's because we have the 4S system. It's now time to actually look into and see how it all conforms together. First shelf is, is containing four batteries in series. Those four are hooked up with the same equal length of wires. Then I parallel, sorry, that battery bank then conform up to a four times 12 volt system and that equals for 48 volt. We have roughly 130 amp hours now and a total of 14S 100P system. The nominal voltage is still 51.2 volt. On every shelf I then hook up two more pairs of those series. They are then hooked up in the sides with the wires as you can see. The negative wire goes one way and the positive wire goes the other way. The big importance here is how you do it and make sure that the length are equal between each set. As you can see I draw power from one cross end to the other to make sure that we have an even draw. The cables on the negative side and the positive side ends are 35 mi square millimeter. Meanwhile the cables or wires in between the batteries are 16 square millimeters. I also added up some sort of connection between each pack and that is because I have 4S in each of them. So to be able to balance these properly they need to be connected in parallel as shown in the image here as well. I'm using the standard connectors that you saw on an earlier image to do this. I then add up all the long months on the front battery series. As you can see, there is four long months per three batteries in parallel. That equals up to 16 long months in total. This will then give us a total energy of 390 amp hours at the nominal voltage of 51.2 volt. This will conform 16S 300P. To run the BMS system as such, I of course have the Watchmon hooked up to the system. And to get all the data out, you may have seen my Grafana stuff that I am working on and having and running. And that's done with, for instance, a Raspberry Pi. It's now time to take a look at how this conforms into the total system. 
On my system, I have four shelves. That means for each shelf, I have a bundle that you can see here. This is a bundle of conforming 12 batteries. So on each shelf, I add up 12 batteries. That's four shelves. We now have a very large total of batteries. I hook up everyone to the bus bar. I have one bus bar on the positive side. I try to keep the length equal, even equal length on how they are hooked up on the bus bar. And then have the negative side. For each wire that comes out of one shelf, I have a fuse. And then I have some sort of breaker or switch. The reason for having it like this is because I want to be able to disconnect one of the shelves for maintenance or if I have any other issues. So this makes it very easy for me to do. As you can see here why again I'm utilizing the cross connection type. So the positive is on the top still and the negative is on the bottom. On the negative side I also have a shunt added and that's for actually measuring the capacity on the battery bank and that's very very vital for lithium iron phosphate batteries that have the same type of voltage almost all over the state of charge. This shunt is connected to the watchman from Batrium. If we went, then took a take a quick look at the system, how it's connected to my uh, inverters and to my charge controllers. <coughs> this is the layout. I have from the main battery bank incoming negative and positive. And that goes to some sort of selector switch. In this case you can see that I have chosen an image of a 32 volt maximum DC switch. You should consider one that is rated for at least 60 volt when working on this type of system. Currently I have two battery banks connected up to this uh, selector switch. I have the main battery bank, this is the lithium iron phosphate bank. And the second bank is the laptop bank, the laptop power wall bank. This then goes out to bus bars and that's to be able to actually make sure that we have equal distance and be able to actually hook up every system. For instance, my system 1 conforms of the hybrid 10 kilowatts inverter. The system 2 currently is the PIP 4048. And the system 3 conforms of, for instance, my PCM60X and even some more appliances. To hook them up to the bus bar, I then have switches for each system. The switches here is of course to be able to actually switch one system at a time off with e without actually touching the part that conforms or connects the two battery banks together. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope that this video actually gave you a little bit more understanding on how I have connected my system up. And uh, I hope to actually draw something better together and update my uh, current overview in a short future. But meanwhile, I would like to thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do that and don't forget to like the video and if you have any comment of the video or anything you want to see, you can always feel free to add that down below. If you want to support my work, of course, check out my Patreon or Paypal links below. I also have more information about the layout on my current website that you can see here and if you want to have any or buy any gear that could have been used for this scenario, I have just put together a quick set of links down below that could represent the type of gear that you can use. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.